Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Team Talk Live. I am your host, Ann Dillard, and tonight we have a special guest, Ms. Monica Douglas Davis. Welcome, Monica. Hi, how are you? I'm well. Welcome back to Team Talk Live. I know you are no stranger to our audience, and it's just such a pleasure to have you back with us this evening. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to be back. It's going to be fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Monica, introduce yourself to the people and tell us who you are and what do you do? Um, thanks so much for having me. And um, to everyone out there, my name is Monica Douglas Davis. I am a licensed professional counselor and I call myself the professional parenting practitioner because my um, primary Practice is here in the Stone Mountain, Snellville, Georgia area, where I work with children and families, uh, specifically a lot of school-age children, and just helping the families with different issues they may have, as well as their children that have maybe ADHD. Um, that's something that I even have a group for, so I'm just excited to be here and to chat with you all about what to do during this time. I thought that you were like just the perfect person to have this conversation with. And our topic for tonight is um, stay insane with your school agers at home, <laughs> right? Yes. How to tips on stay insane um, at home with your school age children. And I thought that was perfect because a lot of people might not know that you were a teacher. Yes. And, yes. and so yeah. I'm yeah. like, okay, this is, this would be great to have the teacher slash therapist to talk about helping parents to stay sane during this quarantine time. That's mom. Cause I didn't say I have three children and look, they're in the background. So, you know, this is going to be a real show. You might not, I mean, I asked them to give me some time, but you know, kids, I have my own school age kids right here in the house with me. So You never know. They might pop in and that'll make it all the more credible. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, let's talk a little bit about this, Monica, because, you know, a lot of, um, parents are home and they're not necessarily parents of school agers are home and they're not necessarily um accustomed anymore to spending so much time with their school age children and um, having to navigate helping them with e-learning and keeping them active and and all those different things that's going on plus dealing with their own stress of um uncertainties and ambiguity. So, so talk to us about, you know, what, what's going on in, in the homes of um, families with school agers. So, you know, this is something that is new to everyone. This has never happened in any of our lifetimes, I should say. So the first thing is it's novel for everyone. So whatever mind state you're in, is okay. I tell everyone that because there, there's no script for this. There's no research, you know, even to support this. There's nothing, this is all new territory, uncharted. So we're all kind of pioneers, you know, um, if you would, during this time. So the first thing I always tell everybody is there's no blame. We're doing the best that we can with what we have. And so that's, you know, the biggest thing. No one knew, I mean, just less than a month now, or, you know, maybe around a month, you know, life just suddenly changed, you yes. know, for all of us. We were at work one day, and I know for myself anyway, my kids were in school one day, and the next day, they weren't. It wasn't like you had weeks to prepare. Right. It was just shut down, you know? Yes. And so for everyone, life kind of just, you know, flipped, you know? And so no one was prepared for this. So the first thing, like I said, is this is just uncharted. So there's nothing wrong with whatever chaos, and that's the word I like to use, you know, in this time is, is normal. So I tell everybody, you know what, you just do what you can. And, you know, we, we kind of go through this as we can. We learn and we move forward and keep it moving. And so that's kind of what everybody's household looks a little bit, you know, different, but we're all just trying to do the best that we can in this situation. And I think that's really important because um, as a parent, sometimes we might put a lot of pressure on ourselves, you know, to even say, I don't know how to help my kids and we're not on the schedule and the house is dirty and, you know, 
there's there's no order and and sometimes as parents we can um put so much pressure on ourselves so thank you for giving parents that permission uh, to just to just be right yeah. just Absolutely. be right to. And so as we, you know, we talk about this, I, I know that you have some tips uh, for parents to help them navigate and help them stay sane <laughs> with their school agers. And, and I'm, I'm taking it, this is how you're staying sane too, right? <laughs> I'm a witness, I'm a living example. So I'm walking and talking as, as I do this. So, you know, you're right. So the first thing, like I said, is, you know, this is just acceptance, you know, there is no script for this. So again, just back to knowing that and just assuring everybody that it's going to be okay. This too shall pass, you know, we'll get through this. So there is no way per se, there's no protocol to this. So that's just the first tip. So again, be, be patient with yourself as well as with your children. Um, I think that the, the, you know, the challenge can be, or one of the challenges is some parents are working from home, some people are not. So I want to kind of talk about both of those. So kind of, yeah. cause they look different for different, you know, circumstances. So for those of you all that are, are unemployed or, or not able to work, let me say that. Um, cause I don't want to say we're unemployed cause everyone's not some people on furrow, furlough or whatever, right. but it, right now you're not outside of the home working. So I say, you know what, now is a good time to do some things that you couldn't or wouldn't do when you were on your regular nine to five, so to speak. You know, now is the time that you get to have projects. I know it's the springtime, so it's a good time to, you know, clean out those closets and transition the clothes from the spring to, you know, the winter to the spring and do some good spring cleaning in your house. You know, we all need that, uh, you know, yeah. clean those pantries and closets out. And the thing about that is you can enlist your children to help you depending on their age, even as little as I would say, as long as they can pick up something. Yes. So that can be a one-year-old that can pick up some soft things, you know, maybe have them pick up, you know, the, the, the things that are, um, let's say you're cleaning out the pantry and you might have some paper products or, you know, you have like for us, we have a lot of shopping bags that, you know, we've gone to the grocery store and we have so many bags. So you might have them kind of pick up the bags, you know, and they can count those. And I, you know, I try to make fun out of, of everything. So yes. we do that and, and we do that. You know, we share, we share counting bags and, and we're arranging and straightening up at the same time. Right. <laughs> that, and the work gets done. <laughs> it does. And it's fun. You know, it's not a pressure like, you know, before where it's like, get your chores done, you know. This is, right. And because <laughs> mommy's helping you. Yeah. Right. Get in there and get those bags straightened out. <laughs> it's none of that. Yeah. None of that. No. Let's have fun. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so what else can we do with our, you know, we're trying to stay sane in this space. Yeah. So the other thing too is realize we do our anxiety. I will raise my hand first. I, even as a professional, as a, as a behavioral health professional, struggle with anxiety during this because it's just so uncertain you don't know one day from the next you know what's going to happen and so it is it is okay and it is normal to feel this way so the tip that i tell everybody is you know to to take some self-care to make some time every day that you spend some time just to de-stress you know to relax um, one of the things i did um for myself was I did a foot massage. Mm. And so um, yesterday, and this is stuff you have in the house. So we're going to talk about everything. You don't have to buy any of this. So that's the good thing is I'm going to give you things that you have in your house. Most of us have them. You know, if you have a bathtub and you want to just get a chair and put a chair up to the tub and you can do it that, or if you actually, I have the little, you know, bin that you buy that, you know, the yes. foot soaker, I like that. Um, and I, you know, I already had some little Epsom salts and things, but you know, whatever it is, I had like lavender and scent. So that was just good for me just to soak my feet, <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah. So you have to, and that decreased my anxiety. It really did. It just made me, I was able to sit, relax. I didn't have any TV on, you know, nothing with this, what's going on and all of that. I just, it was nice music if you want. I have aromatherapy. So I have the diffuser and, you know, put the, the nice scent in there. Lavender's good. Lemongrass is good. Whatever you like, jasmine. 
Um, if you have candles, because most of us do have some flavored candles, you know, we might have been using them for an emergency purpose. So if there's an outage, well, guess what? This is your emergency. That's so let's right. get them out. Let's use them, you know? Yes. Um, so, so simple things like that just make all the difference. So that will decrease your anxiety. Um, and even with your children, because you know what? They feel it. They know it. And then again, if you always have the TV on with all this doom and gloom and the latest death toll and all of that, they're hearing that. They're seeing that on social media. So I say you need to limit that and, you know, have it on all day, have your select times to do it. But, you know, just be honest and tell everybody, you know what, mommy been a little bit, bit unsure of what's going on too, but guess what? We have each other and that's, that's what we're right. going to hold on to is just what we have and spend this time as productive as we can. That's right. That is so important because if, you know, whatever you're feeding yourself is what's going to come out, right? So if you're feeding yourself all that anxiety and all that negativity, that's what's going to, that's what you're going to project onto your children. Yeah. So I and love that. And it can cause that. you to be sick too, right? You don't want to yeah. be ill. You know, it's going to affect that body. The mind affects the body. So yes. you don't want that. And you definitely don't want your immune system to be compromised at this time. And stress um, yes. definitely impacts the immune system. Yeah, I, I, it absolutely 100% does. And the last thing we need is to have a weakened immune system now with everything going on. I agree that with is you on so, that. so, so true. I love mm -hmm. that. Okay, so we're, we're acknowledging our anxiety and we're doing things to, to really lower our levels of anxiety. I, I love the idea of the foot soak. I have one of those too. I haven't used them in a couple of years. So that's okay. a good idea. I'm taking notes. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Okay. So what else we need to do to stay sane? So you know what? I have some things here I want to share and hopefully we'll be able to see them on the screen. I want you to use things that are around your house. Okay, right. so this is for you as well as for, for your children. Most of us have some type of arts and crafts and, and, you know, just even scraps of things that we have around the house. So you want to just use household things that you have. All um, right. So one of the things is I have regular old, just paper, you know, take it out your printer. Most of us have a printer. And so this is a, an activity, actually, that you can kind of do with kids. And I call it, you know, it's... um. What is the title of it? What's it's about? It's all about me, but it's positives, and then it's what called areas of growth. And so you take your regular sheet of paper, get you a pencil, um, crayons, markers, things of that nature, and use a regular coffee mug or tea mug or whatever it is to get mine. Here's mine. This is the one I one of the ones I use. And then you draw circles. So you're gonna have six circles, two on the top two on the middle and two on the bottom. You just trace around that. And then that gives you six circles. And then once you do that, and you do this um, with your kids, and um, you talk about four areas of strengths that they have. You're sweet, mm -hmm. you're kind, you're helpful, you're funny, you're encouraging, you know, whatever it is. And then we're gonna do, um, cause we wanna focus on positives. So we're not gonna call That's them right. negatives, but just areas of growth. Cause we all have them, right? Hello. Yes. Adults, you know? Amen. So maybe it could be like messy, you know, maybe our rooms, <laughs> you know, are not, uh, you know, the, the tip top way we want them. So we're going to work on that. So we put on there that, and then, you know, we may, um, you know, put, put something else, you know, on the second one. So once we do that, then we talk about those and we say, okay, so you know what, you had me cracking up, you know, when you told this little joke the other day and you're always so funny and you want to encourage and validate your children at all. Everyone has three basic emotional needs, I say, which are security, contentment, and significance. And what doing this activity is, it helps to feed into those because mm. it helps you feel secure when you hear about your strengths. It helps build your self-esteem, your self-worth. It also helps, you know, just validate you as a person. You know, there's some great things about me. You know, I'm not, you know, just down. And all the kids, I'm bored. I'm tired. I'm not. Well, you know what? Guess what else you are? You know, you're a good helper. Look at how you're helping me up. Look at how you're straightening up. Look at how you're helping me cook or bake or whatever it is, you know, you know. Right. You help mom get on the computer and get her computer right for work when she couldn't get it right. You know, whatever it is with this technology. Because, you know, these young people, they know it better than us. They yes, do. they do. Yes, they <laughs> do. So tell me those three areas again. Security, contentment, 
and significance. Significance. So yes, yeah, we have to feel valid. Now, I have three children, and I actually have twin girls, so they're um, 10, eight, you know, both the same. They're not identical, and even identical twins have their own personality, and their own needs and gifts. So what happens is, I can, this is something, and this thing you can post. You can, you know, put it on the board, and I don't mean post out there, but just put it out, you know, yes. um, there. You can put it on their room, on their mirror, on their door or something. But this is, again, about validating them, letting them feel significant. So when they feel like something that, you know what, look at that. It says on the door that I'm funny, you know, that I am, you know, a good helper, that I'm loving, that I'm kind, that I'm smart, whatever it is. And then it does still have none of those reminders. Oh, messy. Uh-oh, let me look at my room. Uh-oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what's going right, on right you know, maybe i need to work on that and then with the contentment that just means about being fulfilled you know and that's an area that we're all looking for um you know in life and that's just the accomplishments that we have and how that relates to others and i believe that we all have god given gifts that he's given us that just come naturally you know some people right. are just if you give them an instrument they can just play it it's like they were born almost playing it you know right and that's another tip which is a little side note if you have an instrument dust it off you know get it out play it blow it learn now's the time you know you can do that so we that's have right. a lot of time that we can get back to, to doing those things i you know encourage myself i have a piano in my house and it's like okay um it's dusty let's undust it and you know right play some chopsticks or some beethoven or you know whatever it is you whatever want to yes it's it's fun stuff so those are all some things you can do that help you and that's 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 that self-care and you know de-stressing because music i'm telling you whatever kind of music you like it can it can really help it really does help. yeah and I, I love I love the tips. I love the tips um, that's helping uh, the parents to to de stress and to self regulate because they cannot the, the your children are looking to you for regulation and you yes. can't co regulate which is right. you helping your children to regulate if you are not regulated yourself. Yes. So that is that is so important. Yeah, I mean, I you know, we just, we living and we learn. And that's what I say every day. I learn from somebody. So, I mean, that's my goal every day. One of my goals is to learn something, you know, something new today. If it's just, you know what, look, that's a red robin outside chirping. And you know what, the birds, they don't worry. You haven't seen that one with, with an ulcer. You know, you've right. never heard of that. You know, you've not, you, they chirp every day, regardless whether coronavirus, the hurricane, whatever you're going, you know, nature, if we use that, and I love, that's one of the things we do, you know, in mindfulness, using nature and things, because all you got to do is look out your window, you know, because right. we're in the house, but look out and see, look, you know, the trees are still going to bloom, you know, bloom, the, the uh, flowers are going to bloom. The bees and wasps were out pollinating as we speak, which is why these allergies, <laughs> you know, <laughs> are right. attacking us now. But nature, you know, but if you look at the beauty of it and that's just right. know that, you know, they, that's something that we can embrace and you can use your five senses to help you, your sight, you know, your sound, your smell, you know, those kind of things really help to, like you yeah. said, regulate us and to de-stress us. And then we can even share that with our children and they can learn to enjoy and embrace those things as well. And that will help them. I love that because you can take your children on a nature walk in, a walk in your own yard, right? And, and I love that activity. Five things you see, four things you can hear, three things sure. you can touch and two things you can yes. smell, one thing you can taste. And that is such yes. a, a good grounding activity. I really, really like that absolutely and it's, it's fun stuff you know and it's good for us too because it's something we really don't even think about these things and we don't have the time this is the thing we're not busy you know now we are we can be about being purposeful That's but again right. we you know we're not being busy you know That's so this right. is a great time to That's do right. all of those things that's right. That's right. And then, you know, we're talking about school agers, but these are things that's really um, we can do with with teenagers and even as adults. I mean, I don't have any children in my household now, but my husband and I, these are things we can also do. We can talk about each other's strengths and each other's areas of growth. 
Absolutely. It's, it's great. You, you know, you're so true with that. And then we even up that, you know, now if you haven't had, I say do family vision board and that's fine. You can do it. If you have poster board, it's just a paper and start it. But now is the time to go ahead and set, you know, those goals. As I always say, think about it in the future. You know what? We're going to plan a family trip. My, my family wants to go to Universal Studios. So we can, you know, say, okay, well, we want to go to this theme park and that part. Of, where do we want to stay? Do we want to stay on the resort? Do we want to stay on a, you know, Airbnb? Yeah. Oh, you know, we can, you can plan. Where do we want to eat, you know, each night? Do we want to grill one day? Do we want to go to the beach? So you can, you know, get them involved. Because I'm telling you, the more enthusiasm and excitement you have, they're going to feel off of that and I'm like yes you know what I want to do that this is what I want to do so exactly that good sense of again back to that security that I talked about because they're involved and that helps them you know fulfill that security as well as feel significant right and you know I, I want to go back to something that you said when you talked about mindfulness a lot of times people who, um, who are not aware about mindfulness, they you know, might think, oh, you're talking about something woo-woo, and it, it really isn't. Mindfulness just simply means paying attention. Right. right. Just paying, right now. paying mm-hmm. attention mm-hmm. right now, present, right. being present. And so That's having right. those things that help us to be mindful you know, even mindful of our interaction with, with our or with our children and those in our company is so, so critical. Yeah. I mean, you, you hit it dead on. I agree. And it's just, you know, not a word that maybe we do, us in our profession, we think about it, but, you know, maybe the everyday doesn't, person doesn't think about that. And so, but it's something that we can do every day and it doesn't cost you anything. Not you at know, all. it's free. We can all do, we all have the, the capability to do that. So it's time to just embrace it and really take that on. And again, pass that on to our children. Guess what? They, they will never have the stress levels that maybe you and I might have had because we didn't have the tools. We didn't know. That's but right. see, this is something you can teach early on. And you'll see, and kids are, are smart. You know, even if you look on social media, you'll see, you know, little children doing things because they, they look at what we do. They model after us. That's and right. so if we're practicing this, this is something that they will learn to practice and embrace. That is so, so true. That is so mm-hmm. true. What else can we tell our parents about uh, staying sane? So another thing is, um, and let me just get, I have two examples of things we have. Now, this is an old book, but this is Eggs and Ham. And, um, you know, pull out your books. Okay, so a little bibliotherapy here, but then the, the parental version, we'll call it, okay? Right. Well, you can just go through these. You know, these are, this is a book that's, wow, Dr. Seuss has been out for, what, I don't know, 60, 70, you know, long time, you know, longer than you and I have been around, but yes. this is a great, you know, resource. So pull out your old books, you know, let's see what books they have. Maybe some of them have some books they brought home from school uh, or your bookshelf or whatever, and spend some time just reading, you know, with them. My family has a um, family reading night we do together as a family usually do it Sunday evening but you know you can do some of that fun stuff now maybe you can make grits and ham you know if you have those things in the, you know the house or you can do a substitute you know if you don't actually have green food color whatever but there's lots of things you can do um uh, like you said scavenger hunting I'm just thinking you know of course we just passed Easter and stuff but you might have been able to do that this is so funny yesterday my daughter and their twins, uh, 10, they had uh, my husband, they're in today, they had him do a scavenger hunt of clues and they all, um, eight of them. And each clue actually, they at the end of it, it led to him and they wanted to do a dance routine for him. So, but he had to go through the scavenger hunt to and read them. all the clues to find them and then they me press the you know the music at the end and then they start dancing and it was okay. something they came up with you know on their own just being creative wow. so you know let your children be creative you know and do the things that they do naturally you know as children let them feel free you know this is not the time to be miss um miss neat freak so to speak you know right, right, um, right. of course you know, you know i mean let them most kids know how to make slime. I know it's a mess, but guess what? We can all clean it up. We have to embrace and make these bonds and memories that are lasting because this is something that we are going to remember. They're going to remember right. this time. 
That's know? right. So That's right. Make it fun and allow them, like I said, to use the things you have. Most of us have the things you can look it up, you know, how to make slime, or whatever. Or you could make some. I love food, you know, things like we, you can do a fruit salad, you know, let's talk about yeah. some healthy things, you know, and, and so, you know, now, and I mean, let me raise my hand again, you know, a lot of us have been emotional eating, you know, and yes. I'm, I'm not immune to that either, but let's balance that out. So yes. you might have your sweet stuff, but let's have some fruit. So maybe, you know, my, um, we cut up some fruit. So we had um, some pineapples and some um, oranges and some grapes. We made a beautiful fruit salad of that. We were able to, again, you look, you, those, that senses, right? Cause you're going to be touching it. You're going to be smelling it. You're going to be tasting it, you know, and you can do that. And that's a healthy snack. And then it's fun. And guess what? They had their fruit and they ain't even, you know, <laughs> you didn't have to fuss with them about it, you know? Exactly. So. I love that. I love that. I yeah. love that. And um, paying attention to your nutrition. Uh, one of the things that I did was I put together um, a kit and sent it to my grandkids so that they can make um, body butter. Oh. So, yes, I put the oils in there, labeled it. I put the recipe in there. I sent them the YouTube link and sent them everything that they need, tubs to put the butter in when they're done. Oh. So they, they had a kit in the mail from me um, on how to uh, make their own body butter. Oh, that is so wonderful. I, oh. And look, you did the grandparent thing, which is, that does bring me to a point, you know, look, we're on technology now. You and I are doing Zoom. Zoom is free to everybody. And there are yes. other platform medias as well. So you can do that. You know, most people have a phone. So yes. use your, you know, FaceTime on the iPhone, or if you have the video chat on your Android or whatever, but you can reach pretty much everybody you want and even connect with them even, you know, visually, you're not in the same room, which is yes. actually a good thing for now because we're doing social distancing, but it still can allow you to connect with people. You yes. can even have stuff preset where, you know, you're cooking and they're cooking in their place. Yes. You can, you know, zoom that and kind of go through the recipes together and make it together and laugh and right. see what you're doing, you know, um, with each other. So just use technology to help you. Um, yes. With and embrace it. And, and, and that's a, a fun thing that you can do and have your children do as well. Yes. Yes. I love it. Okay. Do you have one more tip for our audience? Yes. So one other tip um, too is, uh, and we talked about books, but pull out whatever old games you have. Most of us have, you know, I got the, here's a Uno right here. <laughs> um, you know, I got a, what is this? Connect Four. Oh, uh, most yes. of us have, you know, um, checkers, cards, but dust out all that stuff. You know, there's nothing wrong with you. Old school. Yesterday, um, y'all, I jump rope. <laughs> <laughs> I was jumping rope. And guess what? That's a workout, you know, and it jumping is. rope is a workout. <laughs> it is. So, I saw, I saw Did you. I saw you. I was like, girl, more power to you. <laughs> then look, I had to go sit down after that. You know, like they say, sit down, sit down. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it was fun, you know, and yes. I got my girls involved and we had a good time. And, um, you know, so do those things, you know, you can do charades, you can do Pictionary, um, you know, gestures, whatever, everything um, that there's so much that we have just within our own house. You know, we just look around, even like we mentioned the scavenger hunt, you can make things up, you know, um, to use, but you know, the, the biggest tip I guess I can give is just try to stay, um, focus on what you can do, mm. you know, not on what you can't. You know, because we can't control the timeline. Now we do contribute to it with being stay, you know, safe and being clean and hand washing and all of that things. But ultimately, what you know, while we are kind of home and while we are together, um, you know, it's important that we just embrace this time. Um, and That's I do right. want to say one other thing I forgot about the parents that are working um, with their children at home because I did want to mention that is if you um, can. Have it. Now, I am fortunate that I have an office of my own at home, that I do have a room here that, you know, my guest room has turned into my home office. Right. And, and if you do have a, you do need to have a designated place to do your work. So make it a corner in your bedroom, um, you know, your dining room, whatever you have, but make every, let everyone know that that's for work. So if you have to work, and even I like to say for smaller children, because 
they're not going to sit there and give you eight hours. That's not going to happen. Realize right. you're not going to get eight hours, but even talk to your employer and kind of, they know the situation. So try to see if you can split shifts when children are busy. And here's the thing, y'all, I'm not going to like this, hear this, but I'll say for now, it's okay to let the TV watch your kids for a little bit. It's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. a movie is about an hour and a half. You may right. be able to really get some work done in that hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes. Get them their snacks, you know, whatever they need so they're prepared. You mm-hmm. know, they can go down and watch a little, you know, something you approve of. So get a movie, pop in a DVD or or whatever it is, Netflix. But, you know, while you're working, have your area designated. And then I say even maybe get an emoji that like with the smile face and the one that has like the straight face. And that means, you know, I'm working. Don't, uh, mommy, don't talk to mommy unless it's an emergency. And right. then the smiley face means, you know, you're still working, but they can still approach you because they, like they want to connect with you. So that again, if you just have that on there, like on my door, I can put on there, you know, the smiley face versus the straight. So that means they know to knock on the door if the smiley face is on and they know that if the face is on that mommy's really really busy so you know give mommy that time and then have the conversation with them though that's you can't right. just do this you have to talk them through it you got to practice it and say look let's practice so we're practicing okay can you come and talk to mommy now no you see the straight face on the door no that means you can't talk to mommy but here's what you can do so set them up for success don't just think you know they don't think the way we do their brain hasn't matured to the level that an adult does so you have to walk them and talk them through all of these things to help them. But again, know that the unexpected, or you're going to have interruptions, you know, those will happen. Right. But if you kind of prepare them a little bit, like I said, have their snacks together, if they're age appropriate, label it or color code them or whatever you want to do. Yes. And let them use that technology because everybody has a phone or tablet. Let them know snack time is at 11, lunch is at this time, you know, so they can have things that are prepared that they can just go to. So that'll give you some more protective productive time at work without as many interruptions you're going to have that's some right. that's and right. then just work around it you know if they're taking a nap there you go you can work during that nap time you know that's so right those are just some things you can do if you do have to work from home while your children are there with you wow well this has been a wealth of information um to share with our audience and and i so i so so appreciate it and um I'm going to, this is going to be posted on YouTube. It's going to be posted on Facebook. And I'm just excited to see the response that we'll get because it's, it has really opened my eyes to some stuff that I can be doing as well. And I just know that it will be a blessing to our audience. Well, Monica, thank you so, so much again for being here on our stage on Teen Talk Live, just giving a whole wealth of information. <laughs> so it was t- my pleasure. Yes, tell our audience where they can um, reach you and if you have anything coming up. Yeah, so you can reach me. Um, my website is cares, C A R E S, counseling.com. Um, I'm excited to always just be there to support you, whether you're a parent or not. Um, You know, my goal is to be a peacemaker, you know, because this is, you know, uncharted territory, like I said, and we all need support. And so I want you to always be at peace with yourself and others whenever possible. So that's what I, you know, my job is to just try to be a support to you. Um, I'm excited to say, you know, two things that I do have going on. I just did a a webinar and again, it was called Parenting in the Midst of Chaos, (laughs) kind of, you know, so it falls in line with that. And I do have that available on my website, um, which again is carescounseling.com. Um, I'd love for you to sign up for my email so you can get the newsletters, the free stuff, you know, because I do share more tips with you about things that you need um, and can benefit from as a parent and just taking care of yourself. And even to you, all your educators out there, because again, I was a um, teacher for 11 years. I have some great supports out there for you. You know, I just think everybody is doing the best that they can. I'm so grateful just to um, have a platform that I can be a support to you. So again, it's carescounseling.com or social media, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, Monica Douglas Davis. And, um, you know, I'm available. So please reach out to me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being on Teen Talk Live. And thank you everyone for taking the time to watch this and get some information on how to stay sane during this time. I am your host, Ann Dillard, and this has been another episode of Teen Talk Live. 
See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>